Uh, thank you so much sir, for those kind words of introduction. Very good morning, respected chairpersons to the August audience. And obviously, thanks to the organizers for inviting me over here and asking me to talk against the motion. Just now, I got a clue from Manoj sir, don't go for the shake. So please go for the kill. Uh, uh, first of all, someone uh, asked me if you are saying that you are saying that you are saying that you are saying So I would like to tell myself and Dr. Amit Gupta, so there is no fight in between us, so we will be definitely talking some science into what we already know. And recently I came across a tweet which states, is technology or the AI going to replace humans in your future? The answer was no, not at all, but a man adept with knowledge on technology would definitely replace a man who is replete with or who is depleted with Technology and technology, but again, I would like to quote a uh, uh, funny dialogue from a movie scene. Technology should be part of our life; it should not be heart of our life. Uh, so, first of all, do the international guidelines explicitly uh, recommend CGM in all type two diabetes patients? I am going to deep dig deep deeper into this. The answer would be no from my side. So, the ADA 2023 recommendation for usage of CGM. For adult patients on multiple daily insulin, continuous subcutaneous insulin inf infusion, basal insulin. And if you look at youth with type 1 or type 2 diabetes on MDI or CSII, and also patients having diabetes and pregnancy. And now let us look a bit, bit detail into the uh, guidelines, what do they say? For type 2 diabetic patients not taking insulin, routine glucose monitoring is not offering you any additional clinical benefit. And also there has not been significant A1C reduction with these monitoring techniques and it should be done for patients who are using drugs giving rise to hypoglycemia. And if you go further down into the guidelines, it tells us who the people with diabetes, whoever is relying on usage of technologies which include CGM, they should have continuous access to third party payers regardless of age or A1C and also if the patient is school going, there has to be support system in the school. We know there are a number of requirements on the part of the patients like there should be need, there should be demand, the patient should be skilled enough, the patient should be motivated enough and there should be availability of the devices as well. On the part of the healthcare provider, the, the person should be well educated, trained and there should be periodic evaluation of his knowledge on technology. I don't think it is a very easy application which can be applicable across in developing countries and we all know these are the interfering substances with the CGM devices and good number of those are not used that uncommonly which these are used commonly. And if you look at other guidelines, the endocrine society says type 2 diabetes on MDI or the type 1 diabetes having A1C more than 7%. AACE says if your patient is having unappreciated hyper, hypo or at increased risk of hypoglycemia. And look at the last one, which was published in 2017. It says it should be done for people with type 2 diabetes for a minimum duration at the initiation of insulin, increase in insulin dosage, and periods of acute diabetes problems. And I was going through this article, maybe, yes, Bansi sir is there in front of us. Uh, maybe I missed the lines in between, but I did not find any specific recommendation for, P for CGM to be done on type 2 diabetic patients not using insulin therapies. Obviously, I'm going to be corrected if, if there is any. And JAPI, yes, it, it, it summarizes all the guidelines that are at our disposal. CGM on insulin therapy, undoubtedly. For OADs, obviously, if there are issues with regards to hypoglycemia, you read all these lines, uh, bottom ones, and you can see hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia, refractory hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, an awareness. But this is something very important. JAPI also goes on to add if there is a disparity between fasting PP and HbA1c, uh, if again there is a chance of hypoglycemia and also patient education as Amit sir was rightly alluding to. But then uh, has it shown benefits across? I think the answer is uh, no because this study uh, from 26 European countries over a period of six months it says that CGS has not been shown to improve A1c levels Vis uh, compared to SMBG in patients receiving MDI and there were no meaningful differences in adverse events between two groups. This is an editorial in American Journal of Family Physician. It says that in patients having type 2 diabetes, still there are no long-term studies to determine whether CGM improves patient-oriented outcomes. And this is a recent one, I can say, 2021. It says the limited episodic uh, 
RTCGM used in people on multiple non-insulin therapies resulted in modest short-term glycemic benefits. And obviously, we all attribute the reduction in hypoglycemia chances for these uh, people who use uh, uh, CGM. But then what about the chances of severe hypoglycemia? This study in Annals of Internal Medicine in 2017 says over a period of six months, uh, the diabetic specific quality of life or the chances of hypoglycemia doesn't differ between usage of CGM and that of SMBG. Again, the editorial, same old editorial says that CGM's ability to decrease the risk of severe hypoglycemia has not been demonstrated. And apart from that, the STAR-1 trial, surprisingly, uh, there were significantly more severe hypoglycemic events in the CGM arm. Inaccuracy was to the tune of 21% and an inaccuracy was higher even in the hypoglycemic range or during rapid rise or fall of the glucose when exactly we require the CGM to support us with the real-time input. So probably there is a disparity between what we expect from the CGM and what we actually get from the movie Lagan. So are we really worried about hypoglycemia with newer oral antidiabetics? We have a number of those which are associated with robust A1C reduction and we also know the glucosidase inhibitors, the gliptins, the glutides, the gliflozins are not associated with hypoglycemia and they have well demonstrated ability to reduce glycemic variability to a great chunk. Then what exactly is the actual type problem in people having type 2 diabetes right now? We have come across a number of registries across who have pointed to a dismal picture of glycemic control as far as India is concerned. And this is a very recent one, March 2023, uh, which tells us that only 15.7% of patients having HbA1c under control. So we have a bigger problem to deal with. I won't say time in range is not important, but we are grappling with a badly glycemic control state. And disadvantages, we all know that there is a, it is actually not the glucose value, there is a lag between the interstitial glucose and the blood, blood glucose. Lifespan of the century is uh, short. It requires calibration in some of the machines which should not be done during after eating. And some, for some of the devices, the range is limited and there is lack of adequate evidences for its usage in patients having generalized edema like hypoalbuminuria, uh, hypoalbuminemia and hepatic failure. And then CGM devices, extreme hypoglycemia, there is cognitive dysfunction which dents the patient's ability to pick up the acoustic or vibration alarm and also during sporting activities there is increased risk of hypoglycemia where the device is most likely to be kept out and last point, uh, you, you can see there were higher dropout rates in the CGM arms in the JDRF and the Eurythmic trial so probably that points to a state of intolerance so it is, it is not a panacea of solution for all the problems that we are having around. And this is something important, expert reviews in 2021 for patients have not using insulin, so they are not motivated enough to follow the trends, the payer coverage is an issue, and they are not motivated enough to dedicate that much of time to, imp uh, to actually interpret the CGM metrics, and obviously children and adolescents would be non-compliant, and a number of disadvantages we know, insurance coverage, the uh, information overload, alarm fatigue, constant presence of sensor in the body, and, sen and skin irritation. And obviously I'm going to rake up the uh, finance issue over here, you would see that uh, the, uh, uh, the cost towards usage of CGM is somewhat 10 times more than that of the SMBG. We all know what is the uh, financial or the, the uh, economic evaluation, the systemic review published very recently, which says that 3% of the annual income goes towards OPD and if the patient is with complication that jumps up to 10%. So probably if we add something which is not absolutely necessary, probably we are flogging a dead horse. And what is, what is the real-time status, how can we expect the compliance to CGM when there is no compliance to drugs? And in India, it, this article I have accessed on April 6, 2023, it says that only 25% of the type 1 diabetes use CGM devices. And the American Journal of Family Physician in its editorial says that in most people with type 2 diabetes, unnecessary monitoring not only wastes money but can also negatively impact quality of life. And it also goes on to say that there are no patient-oriented benefits to justify its great expense and additional hassles for patients and physicians. So we all know we have seen Ramayana. So uh, this the Ramban was meant for Ram uh, Ravanji, but for other people we had other 
solution. So different problems require different solutions. The same solution cannot be applied to all the problems around. So take home message would be, uh, my understanding is there is no significantly greater A1C reduction. Equivocal results about severe hypoglycemia reduction. It obviously adds to the cost and it requires skill and motivation on the part of the patient and regular training evaluation on the part of the healthcare provider. And we know there are a number of non-insulin uh, uh, drugs which are associated with significant A1C reduction without any much issue of hypoglycemia and demonstrated benefits of reducing glycemic variability as per the TIR studies. So why not use that? Why subject each one of them to CGM? So even after all my arguments, if my friend Dr. Amit still vouches for uh, CGM, uh, I think the audience and chairman would definitely pose a question to him. Doctor, So uh, thank you all for the patient listening. <laughs>